What's up guys, Tuki here back again, this is Rebuilding Hockey Town and let's get right to it because I am excited for this episode as we get to continue the rebuild. It's Rebuilding Hockey Town baby, that's what we do here. And we have quite a few players that we need to re-sign before we get to continue on with the free agency period. The goaltending situation is going to be very interesting as Morazic is most likely to be traded. But first, we need to sign Ian Scott to his entry-level contract. Van Pottelberg and Fitzpatrick will probably be the tandem at the NHL level. Definitely unexpected to get Fitzpatrick when we did, but I am not complaining. Darnell Nurse, who we picked up for a second-round pick, needs his big boy contract. And it's going to be about 4.5, actually 4.525. For three years, Matt Spencer also needs his uh, first big-time contract. And we're going to be able to knock that down to just over $3 million bucks. Not a bad bit of business there. Pionk, we will also look to re-sign. What are you willing to accept? One, three... 7-5 is the answer there. Mark Mathot. Sorry that you had to be on this terrible team for the last half of the season, but don't worry, you are free. TJ Brennan, you are also set free. Look at the names, look at the prospects and the potential. Nicholas Haig needs his entry-level deal. I look forward to seeing what he can do. For Tunis, you are on the way out. A lot of talk about Rasmus Dahlin. I honestly think, for one reason or another, I think I put him... On a CHL team, I can't remember where he actually plays. I thought he played over in Sweden. I think I accidentally put him on a CHL team, though. I forgot to double check, so I don't think we can sign him without sending him the junior. So for that reason, I am going to wait. And as it is, we have a log jam, a defenseman. He's continuing to get better as it is. He's already gone up six overall points from the last time I checked. So I don't think it's going to be too detrimental for him. And that gives us time to work out some of the other prospects because again right now we are at the point where we're a prospect factory and we're eventually going to lock up our core and from there we just continue to develop talent and continue to cycle people out as we always end up doing tom wilson tom wilson not too bad for this team all things considered not exactly turning in to as good of a player as i would have hoped but he should have a spot on our fourth line for quite a while. Jared Stoll, you are gone, and you should have just retired. But that's okay. Andrei Svechnikov cannot be signed. Imbal won't be, and he'll just eventually be traded. He's not worth shit. I can't imagine me keeping a hold of any of these three guys. I'll probably just let them go. And actually, really quick, defenseman, any 20-year-old smart, not going to waste a contract spot on him. So I think we're good. I think we're good in ball as well. Okay, so yeah, we are good there. Benoit Pouliot, we will see you later. Evgeny Svechnikov, though, can be signed. Andre's older brother. And we'll be able to sign him for 195. Not a bad bit of business. Owen Lane needs his entry level deal. Come on down. You are the next Detroit Red Wing. Kelly Chow, 74 overall at 17. Holy shit. Holy shit, Kelly Chow, I picked him for how stupid his name is. There's a real chance he could be decent here. A very good chance. Not too bad. And god damn it, I know what that flag is. I know what that flag is. Oh my god. I forget it. Damn it. Mmm. There's a FIFA YouTuber who's from that country. There's a FIFA YouTuber. I don't remember. It's not Romanian. But it's something like that. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Dominic Turgeon needs a contract. I think I can still be a little bit cheap here, despite him asking for under a million. Should be able to knock that down to 800k. Chartier? Chartier? I hate to kind of pronounce it like Chartier, because, I mean, come on. You can figure out why. You can figure out why. But we should be able to knock this down to 625. Damn. Actually, no, we can't even knock it down that low. So will he accept 700K <laughs> is the question. 
I needs a new deal as well. 725. So that'll be that'll be uh should be able to get the minimum deal for him if it works that way. And we are good to go. We are good to go. We will have contract spots available too for the upcoming free agency period. So I'm gonna be intrigued. I hope to not make the same mistake I made last year in terms of signing someone like Matt Benning that we didn't need. That was a little bit of a hiccup, and I can't afford to do that again this season. So I will definitely try to avoid that. But the good news is we re-signed everybody, I think, and we still have $39 million to spend. Oh, my God. We might have to hand out another contract with, uh, like, what we did for Jarrett Stoll. Fact is, you know, until these prospects are fully developed and are on big-time deals, we're going to be in this much trouble so very interesting and we're going to have to be very careful with the way we handle the cap although it does have certain players down in the ahl of course like darnell nurse i think or there were a couple other guys where you would have seen the chicago wolves logo next to their name so we're not in that much trouble but still we have to be pretty careful here and making sure that if we do some if we do need to sign someone that we do so that we have that maneuverability but anyway, free agency is here. Blake Wheeler is the uh, the main guy here. Let's take a look. Goaltending, not that we need the help, but who's available for shits and giggles? Sergei Bobrovsky. Sergei Bobrovsky. Stanley Cup winner. Sergei Bobrovsky. I honestly, it might not be the worst idea to go after him, although, of course, you know, because I could just get rid of Fitzpatrick and Morazic and have Bobrovsky as our goaltender. Van Podelberg, the backup, and then once Ian Scott's ready, I could get rid of Bobrovsky. There's a strong chance I'm going to go after Sergei Bobrovsky here. As far as uh, decent potentials, we don't really need anyone. Parker Gahagan made it up to a 79, but we don't really need anybody here. High AHL start, I'm not worried about. You have Griffin Outhouse there. So, yeah, no prospects, but a strong chance I'll send an offer out for Sergei Bobrovsky to improve our goaltending. But defensively, we don't need to worry about any of these guys. How about prospects? Is there anybody available? Medium top six, Vyacheslav Zuboff, a sixth round pick from the first draft by the Winnipeg Jets. Might be worth keeping an eye out on him. He is 21, though. So that is a little bit concerning. Any high seventh D guys? Nope. How about high AHL top two? Anybody? We do have these two guys here. Zachary Lozon, a New Jersey Devils pick. Brandon Schuldhaus, also 21. You have a 19-year-old Jan O'Coin, a Vancouver pick. So there are a couple of decent guys, but not anybody we need to uh, break the bank for. Nobody great for right wings. How about left wings? Anybody? Drake Kajula, not quite a prospect there. We do have this guy, Otto Makainen. A Maple Leafs pick from the first draft. We'll probably go after him. Dimitro Timoshov is available as well. So yeah, no no amazing prospects. No amazing prospects this time out. Let's see, though. Best players available. Blake Wheeler. We could go... I mean, we could go for Blake Wheeler. That, that's the thing. It's like, how much do I want to bet on certain players progressing? You know, but that's the thing. It's like, do I also want to take time away from these prospects that could desperately use it? The answer is no, but I also kind of need to sign some players <laughs> because otherwise we're going to be in some tough shit cap wise. Unless, of course, I do the, you know, sign a veteran to the max deal. So let me take a look just the defense alone. So we have these four guys who are definitely on the roster. And then Green and Liljegren. So yeah, signing a defenseman is a terrible idea and simply isn't going to fly. And let me take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, as it is, we have quite a few defensemen signed already. And then forwards, quite a few guys signed. Could afford to, to pick up another forward or two from the looks of it. But, yeah, well, let's see. Prospect-wise... His year is up to an 82, so he's going to be on the main roster. God, this is tough. And we only have three contract spots available. Okay. What to do here? What to do? 
All right, you know what? I'm, I am, I am going to have to trade Morazic. I'm going to have to trade at least Morazic and probably Fitzpatrick. What am I going to get for them? I don't know because, of course, we're already pretty good prospect-wise. I think I'd rather go with Van Pottelberg, and he does have the higher potential. Or do I just... You know, I'm at least going to get rid of Morazic, and then I might just sign veterans instead of Bobrovsky. I think that might be the better course of action. So who needs help goaltending-wise? How long is Morazic's contract? Three years? All right, so we'll try to be somewhat fair about this and actually send him to a team that could use him if there's a team in that situation. Which... Easier said than done. I'd also like it to be a team that's uh, not in cap trouble. There we go. Dallas. Dallas could use some help. Do you have any prospects that are uh, half decent? Any prospects that are half decent that we can afford? That is a uh, that is a key factor here. Anybody that I'd want to pick up? Not looking like it's. So let's just take a look at draft picks here. First rounder. First rounder from Morazic might go through. I'm honestly all right with this. Will that go? Look at our salary cap. Oh my god. Will that go through? No. All right. Let's, uh. Will it just go through straight up for the first? No. All right. That's all right. That's all right. I'm willing to, uh. To give up some later picks. We are very depleted draft pick wise moving forward. As you can tell, I am not too concerned with having the deal with the draft. Uh, we are going to have to give up a little bit more than I had hoped, but that's okay. Or is it? You know what? Nope, Dallas, you can fuck off. <laughs> Never mind. Let's see if we can find a better fit for Morazic with a team that actually kind of wants to play ball here. That would be sweet. That would be sweet. It's a shame Jonathan Quick is being wasted. But that's how the game handles goaltending, unfortunately. Nashville. I mean, they have UC Soros, but they don't really have a backup. So you know what? I'm going to consider them fair game. I'm going to consider them fair game. Do you have any prospects I'd be interested in? Is my question. I meant to be sorting by value. Kevin Fiala. Interesting. Good value, but obviously having morale issues. Or we could go for someone like Jarrett Anderson Dolan. Kevin Fiala. Way too valuable. Even even with his uh, reduced morale. So Anderson Dolan, they don't want to trade him though. Will that go through straight up? No, it won't. Okay. So somebody less valuable than Anderson Dolan. Gerard? No, we don't need another defenseman though. Shit. Oh boy, this is more difficult than I anticipated, but that's all right. We gotta do what we gotta do here. And for some reason, I like keeping the off-season videos live as of uh, as of this series. I don't know. It's just the way I prefer to go about things lately. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully it is a somewhat uh, hopefully it is somewhat exciting though. We could make a deal with San Jose, San Jose Sharks. Who is their uh, very low? Oh, it's a Luke Shen. Poor Luke Shen. Oh, my God. But let's see here. Let's see. Is this Elias Pedersen? It is. Second round pick. Might be worth going after. Really might be worth going after. Is this Brett Davis? Yes, it is. All right. And Troy Terry. Also up there. But Pedersen's a 73. Probably just signed his entry-level deal. Which is good news. Very good news. Can we tack on a third, or is that too much? Apparently that's too much. How uh, about a nice shiny fourth round pick? Just trying to gauge where we are currently at here. Just trying to gauge. He's probably worth a little bit more than I give him credit for, even though they want Morazic, and that went through. You know what? I'm cool with it. Morazic off to San Jose for prospect Pedersen. Peterson, I'm going to say Pedersen because of the double T. And a sixth round pick. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Now let's go out there. And instead of going after Sergei Bobrovsky, I am going to try and sign a veteran forward. 
And a veteran defenseman to a max deal. Jarrett Stoll. Okay, you already had your severance package. Let's find somebody else. Antoine Vermette, you're a little bit too good. Is this Eric Christensen? Eric Christensen. You just didn't pan out, did you? Chris Connor, also an option. Scotty Upshaw. Who else here? Boyd Gordon, Gregory Campbell, Steven Gianta, Mark Latestu. Anybody? Mike, is this Mike Richards? Mike Richards, you're 34 though. You're 34. Pierre Luc Laterno LeBlonde. PL3, as he is known. Okay, let's let's go back up to the top here. Let's go with. Chris Higgins? You know what, Chris Higgins? It's your lucky day. It is your lucky day, Chris Higgins. <laughs> $16 million. <laughs> Chris Higgins, it is your lucky day. You just won the lottery. Is that Richie Regeer? It is Richie. I was hoping it was Robin. I was hoping it was Robin. I know he's been retired for a while, though. Nick Schultz, Steve Eminger. Also an option. Bo Meester, Brian Rodney, Dan Girardi. Chris Campoli. Chris Campoli. It is your lucky day, son. Chris Campoli. $16 million. And we're still going to have $10 million bucks in cap space left. I could still sign Bobrovsky if I wanted to. And trade... Actually, Jesus. You know what? I'll just see if he accepts. Whatever. If he does, then Evan Fitzpatrick goes. We sign him as a free agent. Evan Fitzpatrick isn't the goalie of the future. Of course, that plan is for it to be Ian Scott. So, whatever. Whatever. The worst thing that happens is Van Pottelberg ends up being better than we expect. But we got the money. Let's go up to 8-5 for Sergei Bobrovsky. Obviously, he won't... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go five-year deal. And we'll go up to 8-6 uh, for Sergei Bobrovsky. Let's see if he accepts. So we have the two veteran contracts. Up. No prospects. We don't need them. We already have better. Well, let's see what happens here. Campoli. Campoli just won the lottery. Oh, my God. There you go. Chris Campoli and Christopher Higgins have accepted. Sergei Bobrovsky has accepted. All right. Sergei Bobrovsky is here. Well, all right then. Evan Fitzpatrick, it was nice knowing you, but you are now expendable, and we need to free up a contract spot anyway. Sergey Bobrovsky is the goaltender. We just got the, uh, the Stanley Cup winning goalie here. So he'll be kicking around. Van Pottelberg will be the backup, and we will get rid of Evan Fitzpatrick. All right. Where can we send you? Who needs a bit of help? We'll start uh, from this side. Who needs a bit of goaltending help from Evan Fitzpatrick? That is the question. So far, nobody. Wow, Tampa still has Peter Budai. <laughs> that is somewhat surprising. Then again, actually, I just looked at St. Louis. Maybe the reason they let go of Fitzpatrick is because they drafted Stuart Skinner. Could that be it? Wow, look at the fucking... Jeez, EA. That's a mess. Come on. Look at that. Just fucking look at that disaster. Come on now, man. The AI needs to be improved tenfold. It is unacceptable for that to happen. It's unacceptable for Ben Bishop and Jonathan Quick to be a tandem. There was a time last year where I believe it was Bishop, Price, and... Uh, Fukale, we're all in Montreal. Fukale was like an 87, and he was down in the minors. Ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. We'll go talk to Nashville again. Although they didn't really have anybody that I was extremely interested in. Maybe we can make something work out. Hopefully. Hopefully. Who is this? Jenkins? Is that the same Jenkins? It is Reginald Jenkins. Yeah, draft pick wise, it's looking rough here. I might just try to send him to wherever it makes sense at this point because I'd like to just find somebody and move on so we can get a look at the progression. That is the goal. That is the goal. Chistoff, he was just selected, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, sixth overall, Yuri Chistoff. All right, anybody else here? <laughs> 
Anybody at all? Any teams want to make this interesting for me? Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki. We'd have more than 45 skaters, but that's okay. I can tack somebody on here. I can tack somebody on here. Owen Lane, Ein. I really want Owen Lane on this team. He's a 76 to 20 years old. I just have a good feeling about him. Uh, White, Stevens. I'm going to get rid of Ein. People might disagree with that, but he's a step below Chartier. And, uh, yeah, to try and convince them, I'm going to tack on a few of those prospects that we just drafted that I talked about. Montreal would have too many goalies. Well, fuck me running. All right, never mind, Montreal. Thanks for nothing. Thank you for nothing. What else can we do? Comtois, who we've, of course, had in the series before. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. He didn't pan out in the fantasy draft series, but I'd like to use different players this time out. So let's see. Anybody here? Anybody? DeFazio? Nobody I'm extremely interested in. Riley Stillman wasn't terrible in that fantasy draft series that I just mentioned. Anybody, please. Who are you? Lyle. Brady Lyle, medium top six. I mean, I'd like to get somebody better, <laughs> but my options are quite limited at the moment. This isn't the issue I expected to have. Uh, yeah, there was nobody there. Colorado, ba -ba -da, Columbus. The Blue Jackets have anybody? Looking at names, not quite. Well, this is rough, isn't it? This is rough. This is where a jump cut would come in handy. Fuck jump cuts. That's what I say. Zach Aston Reese made it up to an 84. Not too bad. Mahura. You know what? Let's see if we can get this defenseman. I don't know if we need him. We'd have more than 45 skaters. So, again, well, actually, okay, knowing that... We could look for a slightly more valuable player, because I can tack on Ein, as well as uh, these prospects who are never going to work out. And now we have a bit more value that maybe we can put to use here. I say maybe, because I'm not holding my breath on this at all. I am looking, though, for younger players that, you know, would be down in the AHL, that way we don't have, you know, another player that's in contention to be on the NHL roster because we don't need that right now. We have too many players that are too good already and are in contention to be on the main roster. So I'm looking for somebody, you know, about 70 overall that can uh, be a member of the future Detroit Red Wings. Uh, Pylon? Pylon? <laughs> I should get Verona for shits and giggles. Who else? Who else? Shing. In fairness, that guy was a 75 overall at 19 years old. So, maybe not the worst pick, but very glad we passed on him. That's for sure. Uh, the Bruins. Bruins. I can't afford. As much as I'd love to be able to afford foot, that's not going to happen. Who can we get? Oh, my God. I don't know who to go for. <laughs> this is brutal. I just need to send him somewhere. For someone of half decent value. That's it. That needs to happen. Who are you? Kaler? Is this Kaler Yamamoto? Yes, it is. Please, please join my team. I would greatly appreciate it. I would greatly appreciate it. A little bit better of a player than what I was looking for. But at this point, I don't care. And we should be able to get some picks from the Devils here. Will this go through? Yes, it will. Kaler Yamamoto. Coming to Detroit. See you later, Evan Fitzpatrick. Thank you very much. But yeah, see, now the cap situation's good. The team's looking good with Bobrovsky between the pipes. Let's move forward to the preseason. And we'll get this roster in order. Although I am expecting us to have decisions to make. I'm expecting us to have multiple defensemen that are NHL ready. And we're going to have to decide who we get rid of. It's bound to happen this early on. But then again, the cycle continues, and at least off-screen, as I pick up the pen I just dropped, at least off-screen, I'll be able to get a better look at prospects rather than just, you know, 
trying to find a match as quickly as possible so I don't waste too much time in this episode. I also hate this chair. It squeaks like a motherfucker. Have I said that before? I think I've said that a million times. Whew, I'm losing my mind, man. <laughs> I am losing my mind. Jump cuts would be perfect. I don't know why I don't do them for these videos anymore. But, I don't know. Some people like the jump cuts. Some people like the rambling. Why people like the rambling? I don't know. I don't know. But that's okay. That's okay. EA, thank you very much. <laughs> I was definitely out of steam. Let's figure out what this roster looks like. I'm hoping Van Pottelberg didn't become a starter goalie. That would be uh, troublesome. So let's take a look. Ian Scott's a 78. Van Pottelberg's still an 83. Not too shabby. So it'll be Joseph Wall and Ian Scott down in the AHL. And Bobrovsky and Van Pottelberg. I am perfectly fine with that. Defensively, Chris Campoli, of course, needs to be signed. But let's see. Here we go. Yep. There it is. Okay. So Chalowski is at least a depth defenseman. But look at these numbers. Oh, my God. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Haig can be sent down at least. So I think we're okay. I think we're okay. It's going to be Nurse, Spencer, Lilia Grim, Brickley, Green, Pionk. And then down in the AHL, Chalowski, Hronik, Sariarvi, Niemalainen, Haig, and Hall with the seventh defenseman as the backups and Yoki Haru there as well. Oh my god, are they going to be favorites? Now you could argue, you know, Chalowski, Hronik could be on the NHL team, and you're not wrong, but we'll see if Chalowski continues to progress. But man. Man, the Chicago Wolves are looking dirty. Hishier up to an 84. Dolan up to an 84. Both depth defensemen, or depth defensemen, both depth forwards so far. But they'll definitely be on the team. As that is our top 12. We're good to go. Beautiful. This team, this franchise is looking amazing. And I really don't think we're going to have too many questions to answer. The only thing I'll probably do off-screen is poke around in terms of positioning and player types. But I think I see you drop to a depth forward, which isn't terrible. Do we have any other depth forwards aside from his year and Dolan? We don't. So, Terjan's up to an 85. Basically, I'm trying to decide who do I want on the fourth line, Bertuzzi or Terjan. It's going to be Bertuzzi because he is a year older. So that fourth line is looking really good. Let's see here. Probably have Baptiste on the third line, maybe? <laughs> this is a wonderful problem to have. This team is looking pretty damn good. So anyone else a second line forward? No, they're all thirds. They're all thirds. Nico Hishier, that offensive category. Oh, my God. Let's see, 85 for face-off, 79 for Dolan, 75 for his year, 84 and 87 for Terjan and Faxa. So let's have Faxa, Terjan, and then hold on, let me uh, double check here. Dolan's actually, Dolan actually has a better offensive category. Shit. <laughs> All right, well, Faxa and Terjan are both great. At face-offs. But I think we need to go with the extreme youth line of Hishier, Jonathan Dolan, and Evgeny Svechnikov. Which is insane. Although I could drop Baptiste down to the third line. It's funny that it has him on the top line. Dolan actually has the highest offense. God damn. I don't know what to do, man. I don't know what to do. I'll, I'll figure that out in time for the next episode. Leave me your suggestions. What do you think the line combo should be? But regardless, the team's looking good. The fourth line is pretty much set. And then defensively, I mean, I know what people are already going to suggest. So it'll be Nurse and Liljegren up to an 85. Brickley and Spencer. Let me just double check player roles. Perfect. That is perfect. Beautiful. You could argue, though, have Liljegren in his proper player role. Let me know for sure what you think of that. But for now, this is what the defense is uh, is looking like. And I think it's looking pretty damn good. Nurse, Liljegren, Brickley, Spencer, Luke Green, and Pionk. Although, 
Actually, no, because Berkeley's top four, I'd rather leave him there than bumping Luke Green up. So, yeah, that defense is looking great. And then, of course, the goaltending, that's a hell of a tandem. Sergei Bobrovsky and Joran Van Pottelberg as the backup scratch players, Campoli and Higgins. Welcome aboard, fellas. And then down in the AHL, this team is going to be nasty. Now, I think we'll probably have Joseph Wall as the starter. We'll just try to make sure that Ian Scott gets some games in, which is something I've failed at in the past. Haig's already up to an 80, and he hasn't played a game. So who's scratched? Colton White's a 78, Stevens is a 78, and Yoki Haru. Okay. I do want to get this defense figured out first, but I think we're pretty much good to go. The problem is we have a, we have a lot of guys marked as a minor league top two. So I might have to go and uh, put quite a bit of thought into these lines. Let's see here. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. You could definitely argue maybe it would be worth trading somebody. Like maybe it's time for Brickley and Pionk to go. They're both good defensemen. You could argue maybe they should go. Kronik and Chalowski get called up, and then that way everyone gets bumped up a line. You could definitely argue that. Let me know what you think there. I'm not going to put too much time into editing those at the moment because there is no need. And then, do we go for overall or potential here? Because you look at some of these guys, Giovanni Smith up to an 80, Radish an 82, Owen oh, Tippett an 80 at 20 years old. You have Thomas at a 76, Formentin at a 78, and then scratched players. We're definitely going to have to make sure some of these guys get in. Elias Pedersen, Owen Lane, Cole Lind, and Kaylor Yamamoto. Holy shit, is this team stacked. Guys, I don't want to make a major decision without discussing it with you guys first. So you have seen the team. Let me know what you think the line combinations should be. We're pretty much good to go. This team is in an amazing spot. Whether or not we make the playoffs this year, who knows, but we're, we're good to go, guys. The, the cycle begins now. The cycle truly begins as, you know, most of the prospects we were just talking about, they're going to be gone. We're going to lock down our core. The vicious cycle begins, and hopefully that includes a couple of Stanley Cups along the way. Guys, that is it for this one. I hope you did enjoy. I am looking forward to your feedback. But as always, if you did enjoy, you know, feel free to support the video, support the channel in any way you deem necessary, any and all support is more than appreciated. And until next time, guys, have a good one. I'll catch you then.